Hi, my name is RJ, and I'm a soil microbiologist at the Engineer Research and Development Center, and I work at the Coal Regions Research and Engineering Lab. Um, and as a soil microbiologist, what I do is look at microorganisms in the soil and figure out ways they can help us, whether they can uh, degrade contaminants or uh, return nutrients to the soil or turn something in the soil into something else. For example, taking organic substrates in the soil and converting them to power. That's what I'm going to teach you how to do today, making a battery out of soil. So in your kit, what you should have is all these things in front of me. I'll go through and explain them. So this is really simple because all you're really doing is giving the organism in the soil a place to live. So the easiest place to do that is in this plastic cup. So you have this plastic cup that has markings on the side, and they'll come in important later. Your lid, your circuit board, where we'll attach the different um, parts to. You also have an LED to indicate that it's working, a capacitor to gather the power, and then we have these two felts, and this is where the microorganisms are gonna live. So the green wire is going to be, and the green wire in the small felt is gonna be the anode. So that's where the microorganisms are actually producing power. And then the orange wire and the thick felt is gonna be the cathode with the depositing electrodes. All together, when it's done, it looks like this. You can see this one actually already blinking. What you also need is, oh right, some soil. So, you can use any soil that you want. Um, I just got it from the backyard. Um, if you want, you want to have soil that comes from a wet place, um, ideally like the bottom of a pond or a lake, because those organisms are deprived of oxygen, and they like having little oxygen as possible to actually produce power. Um, but any soil will do. So, you need about, two, two, two. I'm gonna use my handy dandy measuring cup, about three cups of soil. Do. And this soil is pretty dry, as you'll see. I'm just going to do two cups, because it's pretty bulky. And you want to make sure that the soil that you have is fairly mixed up. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't touch this with my bare hands. Let me get some gloves, because you never know what's in there. You can use any kind of gloves you want, cleaning gloves you have. I think your kit comes with these ones, and they're pretty fun, because I feel like a tattoo artist. So break up your soil, if there's leaves and sticks in there, you can take them out because you don't want them to have um, air bubbles that are trapped, because air is bad for your batteries. So if you've got soil out of the bottom of a lake or from a pond, it's gonna be pretty wet, so you wanna leave it out to dry for a little bit. Because at the end, you want it to be wet, but not soupy. All right, so that's nice and broken up. So now, I'm going to add, slowly add water to it to bring it up to the moisture that I want. And I always add a little bit at a time. And while you could use a spoon to mix it up, I have to use my hands. You can feel more in touch with the soil. You also can feel how the consistency changes. So if you ever baked before, you want this to be kind of like cookie dough in consistency. You see how it's starting to get more smushed together. Add a little bit more water. Again, a little bit much, or a little bit more, but not too much. I want this to be kind of almost like oatmeal or grits when it's done. So while water is necessary for the organisms to um, live and make power, you can give them extra nutrients, like throwing in a little bit of Gatorade or coffee or juice, something like that. But remember that there's other things inside the soil besides bacteria that are hungry for nutrients that might um, overpower the bacteria. So only use like a teaspoon at most of like Gatorade or something else. But again, water is totally fine. That's all they really need. So this is a really good consistency that I have. See where it's kind of wet and jiggly? That's what you want. So while that's going, we want to actually let that sit for a bit so it can really get hydrated. So I'll leave that over here. And while that's finishing up hydrating, I'm going to set up the rest of the battery. So like I mentioned, there are these two felts. And these are where the bacteria are going to live, specifically this one, the anode felt. So this one has a green wire. And if you're colorblind, just remember that this, this one is thinner than the other one. And there's a reason for that, but we'll get into that later. So to make the felt, all you want to do is bend the wire at like a 90 degree angle, like that, and then slide it through. And you want to make sure none of the wire is exposed because it will start to get corroded um, by the bacteria. You want to push it all the way through just so it's in the felt. And if you want 
help to bend it around it, kind of like you're threading it. Oop, almost there. There we go. So the energy look like this. And you're going to do the same thing with the orange wire. And bend it. And slowly enter it through. Should be easier because this one's thicker. All right. Also, when I you want to go to your circuit board. So on your circuit board, there are numbers on each side. And this is going to be important because these parts have to go in certain slots in there. So you want to take your capacitor and your LED, and you notice that each of them actually is a little bit, has a long side and a short side. So on your circuit board, and there are numbers on the left and the right. So I start with a positive and a negative, and that's where our wire is going to go when the um, battery is complete. So on the, um, this side, there's odd numbers. On this side, there's even numbers. And for your capacitor, you want to take the long side and the short side, like this, and put the long side into the slot numbered one, and the short side into slot number two. Let's do that here. Yeah. It's going to be a little bit tricky just because they're uneven, but it's important to make sure you have good connection, otherwise you won't be able to tell the battery is working. Like that. So it's okay this one bows out a little bit. It's kind of like you're leaning off to the side with one knee. So similarly, we're going to take the LED, which has a long side and a short side, and then you're going to put the long side into slot number five and the short side into slot number six. And it's okay if it bends a little bit. As long as it's connected, but just because I have to break the LED. Whoop. Okay, pretty sure I got it. It's okay if it looked a little funky, um, as long as they're attached. Alrighty. Now that's all set up. Um, it's probably been enough time for our soil to get really hydrated, so we're going to take that now and scoop it in. So remember, it's very important that you get most of the air out because, as I'll explain, these bacteria want as little air in their environment as possible. So give it a good mix, smush it down, squeeze out the air. And just because you don't see big air bubbles doesn't mean they're not there. All right, so with your handy dandy spoon, you want to take about two big spoonfuls and put it into the cup. What you want to do is get spoon, um, soil up to the the first dash, so where it says number one. This is about one centimeter of soil. Whoop. And as you're doing this, give it a shake to help it settle, but also this will help uh, bring air bubbles to the surface so they can get out. So that's pretty good. I'm gonna leave it about there. Then you're gonna take your thin wire, or your thin felt with the green wire, and place it on top. And you kinda wanna lay it down like you're putting um, a sheet on, so from one end to the other, to help push out air bubbles. Whoop. So once it's in there, drape your wire off to the side, just so it stays out of the way, and using your spoon, push it down a few times to smush out the air bubbles. And this one is thinner because this area that's going to be at the bottom is very oxygen depleted. It's also very small. So you want to make sure that where the microorganisms are, there's the least amount of oxygen possible. If it was too thick, then there would be part of it that had too much oxygen, and they would go there instead. And that would be not be good. So once it's in there, you're going to take more soil and put it on top. And this part's very important because this is now you're like sealing the anode in. So make sure you get plenty of soil in there. And before, I would say once you get to about the three line, you want to give it a good shake, let it level out, and make sure you're felt is completely buried. This is like any other battery, like the kinds you use for your cell phone, or your car, or your drone, whatever the cool kids are doing these days, uh, in that it has something that's producing electrons, something that's consuming electrons. So the anode is electron producer. So that's where the bacteria are, and they're making, they're taking electrons from uh, food in the soil, organic matter, and pushing up the wire to the cathode where they're deposited. In um, a battery like a cell phone, that's used done chemically. But this is done um, biologically. And these bacteria are special because most bacteria, while they're breaking down organic matter, they don't actually have a place, a way to put it somewhere else. They just kind of let it loose into, um, into the soil or the water, wherever they happen to be. But these bacteria are special because they have um, nanowires that can actually attach to the felt and essentially push the electron somewhere else. And these bacteria are essentially everywhere. Um, they're in the soil, they're in the water, um, which is why you can use any soil. And they'll naturally 
gravitate towards this environment, which is why we want as little oxygen as possible because these particular bacteria don't like oxygen, so we're promoting their growth. So you're gonna keep on adding soil until you get to about the number five. And after you're doing this, again, just make, give it a good shake every once in a while to make sure you're getting those air bubbles up and out. Also to make sure you got just good coverage. And if you're doing this and you're shaking, you notice there's a lot of water pooling at the top, that means your soil is too wet, um, which might be fine. Um, but just keep aware, like if, you, if it's really, really soupy, you might need to dump it out and add some more soil. Boop, boop, boop. And one more. There we go. And then give it a good shake. All right, so we're just at the number five, which is where we want to be. All right, so just like the anode, we're going to attach the thick felt now with the orange wire. And I would flip it around, because when we're done with this, we're going to pull them through the, pull them through the lid. Um, so it's important that they're on opposite sides to make it easier. So just like the anode, you want to slowly lower it in from one side to help push out air. While this one needs air, actually, to complete the reaction, um, you also want it to have good contact. Otherwise, there's no place for the electrons to go again. So once it's attached, and smush it to kind of get out air and make good contact. And there we go. That is, now the cathode is attached. All right, so now that we've attached the cathode, I'm gonna flip this around actually, so the orange wire is on my right and the green wire is on my left. And this will be important because that's how we're gonna attach it to the circuit board. So now you're gonna take your lid and you'll notice there are two holes here, here and here, and also a slot where the circuit board's gonna go. So what you wanna do is take your lid and then push these wires through those holes I want to push a little bit at a time because you're going to, whoop, you don't want to disturb the felts too much. So push the orange wire through first, but not all the way. And then also push the green wire. And if your um, felt comes up a little bit, that's totally fine. Just make sure as you're pushing it down, you get a little tap to make sure it's attached. Now what you want to do is grab the two wires and gently push down the lid until it's attached. And give it a quick check to make sure your felt is still in place, and it is. Coolio. So your wire should look like this. So now you can take your circuit board and it should fit right inside of there and attach. All right, now the last thing you're gonna do is take your orange wire, and you'll see that on the circuit board there is a plus sign and also a minus sign. You wanna take your orange wire, bend it over, and plug it into the plus sign. It's okay if it comes up. And then take your green wire and do the same on the other side. And you wanna be gentle, but, but firm enough to actually get it in the slot. There we go. And it should look like that. So although we just set it up, it actually is producing power currently, or specifically it's producing electrons. Um, it just hasn't produced enough yet. That's why the capacitor is here. So I'll get into too much detail. This is about micros, not about electrical engineering. Um, the capacitor is there to help capture power, electrons, until it has enough to actually light up the LED. Otherwise, it wouldn't be able to produce enough at once. So right now, it's, it's charging, the, uh, charging the capacitor, giving it enough uh, um, electrons until it actually can blink the LED. Um, so within, I would say, three to five days, it should start blinking, kind of like this one. I made this one over the weekend, and um, as you see, it's blinking. So this means that it's have, it has enough um, power to hook up, hook up to the capacitor, charge it, and then release it um, fairly frequently, which means it's producing a lot of power. So the faster the LED blinks, the more power it's producing, and the happier the, the microbes are. So how do you keep these healthy? Because these are living things, and they're going to run out of food eventually. Well, the best thing they can do, or you can do, is keep them wet. So if this is, um, this is why it's completely sealed, so they don't lose the moisture. Um, and also, if you keep it too, too cold, though, too, it also can, um, the microbes might go to sleep, essentially, and die off. Or, same thing, too hot, they might get exhausted and also die off there. So I keep them at room temperature, keep them moist, and eventually start producing power. Um, if they don't start blinking within five days, either the um, soil is too wet, it also might just be 
might just take them a little bit extra time, um, depending on how dry the soil was before you actually wetted it. But most soil should be able to produce electricity within at least a week. Soil is amazing. Um, not to say that as a soil microbiologist, but just to say soil is incredible. Um, within like a gram of soil, so maybe like a starburst size of soil, there's over a billion microbes in there, which is, you know, 10% of the people, or sorry, 12% of the people on the planet and then one gram of soil. Um, so within that, there's thousands of different species, and we're kind of lucky that each of those species has a different role to play in the environment. So in this particular case, we are optimizing for one particular species that can actually break down organic matter and produce electricity, but there are thousands in there. So think about that next time you're like looking at the soil, like there's an entire world in there of microorganisms, and each of them is special, just like us. 